everyone's been there. It's the start of a new world, and you have to go to the nether, and you gotta get your hands on some of their skeleton skulls. It's pretty much unavoidable for any world. Like, you basically need a beacon to build a decent wither skeleton farm, or at least an easy one back here, because you need to get wither roses from killing your first wither. But one beacon by itself, not too useful. Everyone wants tons of beacons. You want every single effect, and doing that manually is no fun. We've all tried it, and we've all failed, because after you spend an hour doing that, you just never want to do that again. Then you log on, you're like, all right, let's build a farm. So we type in with our skeleton farms in the YouTube, and here's what comes up. Here's your two options. So first, you got redstone behemoths that are 20-hour projects once everything's said and done. And you know, I get it. I built one of those, and I can get why people wouldn't want to build one of them. And then the other option is pretty simple, but it requires you to transport a piglin uh, from a crimson forest all the way into a different biome. Uh, the Soul Sand Valley or the Warp Forest are those two biomes typically used. And... Yeah, you gotta put that thing in the place, you gotta make minecart lines or paths for 200, 400, however long, many blocks it takes to get to your optimal fortress. And then, yeah, you're finally done. Or, you could just build the farm behind me, which you finally found the tutorial and the farm that you're gonna build in your Minecraft world. Now here's why you're gonna build this farm. So first, as you can see, it's really simple, it requires basically no redstone at all. And it also does not require you to transport a pig on hundreds of blocks. You simply gotta know how to spawn an iron golem, which, let's face the facts, that's probably one of the easiest things to do in Minecraft. So the way this farm works is essentially we use the iron golem to aggro all the wither skeletons that spawn on this wither rose pad uh, that cause them to run towards the center, where they then fall down the trap doors onto this string block, where if they fall on this block they'll get pushed in, and then the same thing happens here. We do get some glitching in the walls, but that's not too big of a deal. Where they then get funneled down to this one block drop down below, which we can see that the hoppers are overflowing. Where we got our guy named Steve killing these guys away over and over again, going into the chest down below. Uh, we got a couple, because some of the drops do spill off, so you got a little bit of an extra output there. But yeah, guys, as you can see, very simple, very simple indeed how this farm works. Two other notes that are a little more complicated, so bear with me. So first off, the reason why we have these extra blocks of carpet on top uh, around the outside of the spawning pad is because this actually encourages pack spawning, uh, which I don't really know how it works, but I know for a fact it does help get more wither skeleton skulls. As by just adding these few blocks of carpets, I actually received around one and a half times the rates as I did without. So it's definitely worth investing a few extra blocks and carpets into the farm. The second mechanic that I would like to talk about is where we're actually building this farm. So in 1.16, the spawning mechanics in two of the ne new nether biomes changed. So this is the Soul Sand Valley as well as the Warp Forest, and I will link a video from Nembon that explains this in detail down below. But essentially, what it means is that when you build a farm in one of these biomes, and the only mobs able to spawn outside the farm are in just one of the biomes and not a fortress, etc. I'll explain more of this later. It essentially means that very few mobs are spawning due to the way it works now. So you're only going to get a few gas and a few skeletons spawning, meaning that most of the mob cap is left unfilled, meaning your farm is able to generate tons of wither skeleton skulls, uh, basically, uh, per hour. Uh, we're basically getting a lot of these guys spawning in without actually spawn-proofing the entire nether, which we did used to have to do, and that was one of the worst things and why these farms used to be so much more difficult than they are now. Now let's talk about rates, of course, that's the number you guys all want to hear. So with looting 3 and a pretty optimal spawning, I've done a pretty good job of picking a location. So the despawn sphere is represented by that pink barrier. Uh, and most of the space in here is the Soul Sand Valley. I also went ahead and spawn proof basically the entire fortress. I did miss a couple blocks, as you can see by that blaze over there. Uh, and I also spawn proof any additional biomes that were in the area. So I lavaed over the little bits of nether waste that were in the area. So if you have a decent area like this, there's also a lot of lava around, so it is a little subjective. You're going to get around two stacks of Wither Skeleton Skulls per hour. If it's not as good, for example, I didn't spawn proof all that to begin with, you know, there's some mo other mobs spawning. I was still receiving around a stack per hour, so you don't have to be perfect to still get good rates. But you can honestly, with a perfect farm, you probably get upwards of two and a half, three stacks of Wither Skeleton Skulls per hour of this thing. Uh, and that means if you literally spawn proof the whole thing. But... To be honest, two stacks an hour for very minimal spawn proofing. Just the fortress and a little bit of biomes, if you choose the right location, is totally fine in my books. Uh, you'll get around overnight 10 hour AFK session, that's six and a half stacks of beacons easily. So, more than enough. Alright guys, now let's talk about 
what you need to build this farm. All right, in order to build this farm, here's what you need. So this is the schematic, so it's rough. I think there's a few extra nether bricks in here than you actually need. But the only important notes are the wither roses obviously will be hard to get. That's the hardest item to get with this farm. However, I know it seems daunting, but it would technically work, but just be a lot slower if you didn't use wither roses because all the other mobs would be spawning. So just get your first wither. I'll link a very easy wither rose farm down below. It's low effort to get the wither roses. This is one thing you can't really skimp on if you want decent rates. The only other thing is you do need blocks. Uh, nether bricks can be any types of blocks, as can the smooth stone. I just differentiated it to show the farm. But yeah, everything else, relatively cheap, nothing too much. With a rose farm is down in the description. So now let's talk in detail about where you want to build this farm. So as I said, you do want to build this farm in a warp forest or a soul sand valley. And this is a critical point, and a lot of people on my other farm had some issues with this, is you need to make sure where you build the farm, you're going to build it in a crossroads that looks like this. Uh, to be clear, it does not include crossroads with the upper thing like this. Don't work. You want to look for one like this, just flat. Uh, so you want to look for one like this. You want to make sure that not only is it in a warp forest or soul sand valley, you want to make sure that basically most of the biomes, so make sure as much as you can, obviously it's going to be hard to find a perfect farm, uh, perfect location in just a normal world. I mean, this one's the easygoing survival seed and we're several thousand blocks out. You want to make sure that most of the biomes in a 128 block radius from where you're going to be AFKing, so say down here below the thing, is Warp Forest or Soul Sand Valley. So people had issues where they built it in a small section and then there's huge chunks of other biomes. You want to make sure it's all Warp Forest or all Soul Sand Valley because you will have to spawn proof the additional biomes. So for instance, in this location, at this platform, we will end up having to spawn proof portions of this Crimson Forest, which I will show you what a finalized spawn proof version looks like at the end of the tutorial. Uh, beyond that spawn proofing, you will have to spawn proof the fortress, but that's okay. Uh, that's You have to do that regardless. Uh, another thing to note is if you can find a lot of lava near that biome, that also helps because even though mob spawning is reduced, that will reduce it even farther. So that's always good to see. So yeah, just make sure you're building this in a biome like the Warp Forest or Soul Santa Valley and it's actually surrounded by that in all directions. I'm just going to make this clear because people will have that problem and they have to spawn proof, you know, half the nether because they didn't build in the right spot in the last tutorial I made for a similar farm. So just to be clear. And as I said, you do want to build it in the crossroads. So now let's just get started with the tutorial. Obviously, you might want to put a bit of a wall up if you don't want to get totally mauled by blazes. Otherwise, fire res will be your friend. First thing you want to do is mark out the center of your uh, spawning pad like this, which is in the middle of a crossroads like this. Then you want to go out an additional nine blocks in each cardinal direction. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you want to do that in every single direction out by nine blocks. Once you've done that, you should have a bit of a plus sign with dirt. Besides dirt, you could also use nether rack because you can place wither roses on that as well. So the next thing you want to do is just basically fill in the square uh, at this level and then obviously clear out any of these blocks on top. And you just want to fill in the square. It should be 19 by 19 once everything's said and done just with dirt. And you should be left with something that looks a little like this. Obviously, there is some temporary dirt in the center. What I recommend doing is just marking out your center block once again. Now, what you can actually go ahead and do is just place, uh, go out three blocks from the edge, just like so. I believe my field of view is down, so I will have to turn that up. And what you want to do is just place the three blocks coming out on each side and then place carpet on top. Of course, you can reuse some of the existing fortress blocks just like so and kind of fill it in just like that so you don't have to actually clear that out if you don't want to. What you want to do next is come back to the center of your farm once you have those carpets in on the outside just like so. And you basically want to punch out a 5x5 five five hole just in the center of the farm. Uh, if you do have some extra blocks there, you will have to clear those unfortunately. And just go like this. Next thing you want to do is from that center block, which you can actually leave in place, you want to go up by four blocks, just like so. So three on top of the one that was already there. And on one of the sides, it doesn't really matter too much, just place some trap doors, just like so. So it's like that. Next thing you want to do is just place basically a ring of walls, leaving this wall as a gap. 
and that is essentially to prevent the wither skeletons from falling off this way. So you're funneling them into these paths. Next thing you want to do is put one right here and put another right there. And you actually want to bring this up by an additional three blocks and bring this one up by an additional two blocks, just like so. And same thing on the other side. So put another wall right here, another wall right there, two blocks up, three blocks up just like so. Now we're gonna actually put our iron golem in place. So the first thing you wanna do is kind of just build this up by two. And these are actually marker blocks, these upper ones right here. So you can actually punch these out. You're eventually gonna put your chains against it like so. Then what you wanna do is just come in here and you might wanna place some additional blocks or walls to help prevent this thing from escaping just like this. That's what I would recommend doing, to be honest. Place this guy in, like so, right on that center block. Then go ahead, place your chains like this. Then break these walls right here, as well as any additional blocks, just like so. And this guy's actually trapped in. Uh, as you can see, <laughs> he can kill the magma cube when it jumps up there. Of course, you do want to clear any lava near the farm. I didn't mention that. Or have to fire tick off that... It's like a good segment, I guess. So the next thing we want to do is these guys are just going after the Iron Golem. That's funny. Um, what you want to do is you want to come down here and go down below this block, two blocks of glass. doesn't have to be glass. can be any full block. And you just want to have them fall right here. Then you'll have a piston just like so right here. And then block down have a block just like so so piston on that side so two glass blocks piston gap temporary blocks block right there and this should be glass before we get on with the rest of the tutorial i would just like to note that i did miss a single chain in one of these blocks make sure you have four like this uh the wall formation that was there before should look something like this sorry about that Next thing we're going to do is put our tripwire in place. So just bring some blocks back here. Make sure you put a carpet on this or use a non-spawnable block, something like that. Uh, I'd say just do this like so. Then what you want to do is do that exact same thing on the other side. So block of a carpet on top to prevent any mobs from spawning. Two tripwire hooks and just connect that with a few string just like so. Then what you want to do is come down by an additional two blocks on either side. And it's essentially the same process. So you just have two blocks right here. I'm sorry, place a piston right here. Then skip a block, just like so. Then do the same tripwire setup as you did up top. So tripwire, tripwire, three string this time, and then carpet on top of these two blocks. And now that's actually all of the redstone of this farm complete. It was just a couple tripwires. Next thing you want to do is extend these two glass blocks down by additional 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And do the same thing on the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I have no idea why I just talk so fast for no reason. Next thing you want to do is just place a chest on one of the sides. You might have to clear some lava like I did here, just as an FYI. I'm going to place a hopper right there and then come around the back of the farm, whichever side you're not going to be killing, and just place in additional three hoppers that all feed into the chest just like so. That's the hopper formation from underneath. Next thing we're going to do is add in some more walls. So essentially what you want to do is just extend these walls down as far until the thing shifts over. So this is, I'll do one side on camera. So essentially you're extending this down until the pistons push over. So like you extend this wall down to here and then the pistons will push them over. Same thing over right here. But then the one in the center obviously will end up needing to go down all the way. You have to extend this one up to here. So then you just extend this one all the way down to where you're going to AFK. So right here you can leave one block open. Another important note is that you can place a carpet on top of these hoppers, just like so. And of course, on this one as well, what you want to do is just do the same thing on this side. So extend it up, just like so. 
all the way up, essentially trapping the wither skeletons as they fall in the drop shaft. Once you're done, it'll look something like this, something very simple, just like so. The only thing left to do is to add in the little killing area. And because some of the drops do have a tendency to kind of fly out, you will add some extra hoppers. Uh, so first thing you want to do is you are going to want to stand on some half slabs, whichever side you're actually killing on. Uh, and I suggest doing that about, you know, one and a half blocks lower, just like so. That way you can just be swiping away right here. Uh, and then under that, just place some hoppers. Uh, I suggest doing like a three by six around the farm, just like so. Uh, this is just to make sure you get any drops uh, that fall out. It's probably pretty limited, uh, the amount of drops that fall out. It's just a few of them, but just in case your inventory fills up and they'll just go into this chest. It's definitely worth it You get the extra few skulls. Now there's just one more step of the farm before we have to spawn proof, and that's actually the place of Wither Rose on every single one of your dirt blocks, nether rack blocks, whatever block you decide to use. You just want to go around and place a Wither Rose on here. And the reason why we did this last is actually because, yeah, we didn't want to get withered while we're building the farm. So yeah, go ahead and just place a Wither Rose on every single dirt block. And that is actually the farm complete. Obviously make sure any of the carpets that might have burned away you place back. But this is the farm done, so I'm going to go back in the hard mode and maybe we'll get some, yeah, we got some spawns. As you guys can see, they're now funneling into the farm and dropping down below where we can then swipe away at them with our sword and looks like we just had extremely bad timing here on the first try the, oh that's because we have a wither rose there we go once you have no items the farm is totally complete gotta collect those items there you go so the farm is now totally working and the wither skeletons are falling down below now the only other thing you need to do and this is a bit of a task is spawn proof as you guys can see instead of getting spawns in the farm we're getting it throughout all of this fortress as well as the little bits of crimson forest that are within the spawning range. So what you gotta do is you gotta basically spawn proof it. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Uh, you can place buttons, you can place slabs, you can place pressure plates. Uh, doesn't really matter. I prefer slabs since it's the cheapest. Lava is also an option though. It can be a little tedious, but basically you just gotta half slab the entire fortress. You can also just destroy it. It's kind of up to you. But yeah, you just wanna half slab this entire thing so no other mobs can spawn. Uh, this also includes blocks that are very close to the fortress. Uh, like for example, right here, you might want to spawn proof these few blocks that are right next to it, because that could be in the bounding box still. And then also, of course, you want to spawn proof portions of other biomes besides Crimson Forest, besides Warp Forest and Soul Sand Valley. So like these blocks right here, you're definitely going to want to spawn proof these for sure, because they're within the spawning radius. Now you may be wondering, how do I know? Like, how do I know what I have to spawn proof? And I'll actually go ahead and show you how to do that. I will link a mini HUD tutorial by Logical Geek Boy down below, however. So basically what you want to do is you can come to the farm, wherever you're AFKing. So this is where you'll be AFK hitting. And what you want to do is you want to download mini HUD. And you can actually use mini HUD to put up a shape. So if we get a shape and we add a despawn spear, uh, just like so, and we enable it, as you can see, it basically adds a giant sphere around that point that essentially lets us know what we have to spawn proof. So we got to spawn proof this entire fortress, as you can see, and then small sections of this crimson forest. Nothing too big, big though. So this is also a good way to check where you want to build the farm. So you can start off, like, for example, find this and just sort of do a spawn proof and like, okay, there's not a lot of biomes. So this is a very useful tool to help you figure out exactly where you have to spawn proof. Indeed, and it's very easy to install with fabric. Very easy. Logical Geek Boy will walk you through that though in his tutorial. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm really happy with how this farm turned out. I think it's a really simple farm that also produces quite a bit of skulls at two stacks per hour. And I definitely think that it's a pretty good option for you guys if you're early game and you want to get your beacons and you don't really want to spend 20 hours on a massive farm. This is definitely the farm for you. I will put a world download down in the description. I don't feel like spawn proofing all of this by hand again, so I will just be putting the Soul Sand Valley version of the farm down below. However, they're both the same, so if you have any trouble, make sure to check it out there. Also, join my Discord if you have any questions, and feel free to drop a comment down below, guys. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd really appreciate a sub if you did. I'm trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by December 
31st, 2020. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys could help me out on that front. And yeah, guys, other than that, have an easygoing day and I will see you all later. Bye-bye.